My name is Amit Prasad and I am a regular city dwelling kid who's ventured out into these forests to meet a tribe of people that are considered one of the most primitive and isolated. The upper Bondos have always lived on a hill known as the Bondo Hill. We visited one village on this hill that had 400 houses in it. We were met with enthusiasm and curiosity. We spoke to a local social worker there. I'm Simon. Uh, as a family, we moved this place seven years back. If you see the Bondo women, they are more powerful than the men. They are involving in all our area, like even cultivation and for their uh, livelihood, like house work. The older Bondo women have stuck to tradition and still wear the signature brass rings around their neck and colorful beads on their body. While the younger Bondo women has switched to more modern clothing. Bondos are famous for making alcohol. They can make alcohol from any fruit, uh, even mango, jackfruit, tamarind, uh, then forest orange, then one more flower, it's called mahua. So they make alcohol, even uh, rice beer also they will make. Uh, this is alcohol in process. The fruits, they will keep it for a few days, preserve it, and once it become paste, they will boil it and they will cover with a mud pot and fully uh, cover. So no air and steam will come out. So only that steam will go through the pipe. The steam will go to that aluminum pot. They are keeping that pot into the water so that uh, it will be cool. In one process, they will get at least uh, two or three uh, uh, bottles of alcohol. The alcohol that's made there is so popular that they sell out the alcohol within the village itself and they charge 50 rupees a bottle. So the local market is the only time that the Bondo women really leave their village and the Bondo hill and come down to the larger villages in the plains. They bring their produce and sell it at these local markets. We also noticed that all of the women uh, were taking their vessels and clothes to a particular spot in the village. We followed them to realize that there was only one source of fresh water in the village which was a hand pump and this hand pump was meant to serve more than 400 to 500 houses. So coming to this hand pump was uh, for water was it's like a communal experience for, for the villages where they congregate and, and share that source of fresh water. There was another uh, well that the government had dug up uh, but unfortunately that's not usable anymore. The children uh, of the Bondo tribe are as in independent as the women. They are usually trained to take care of each other and this becomes very important especially during festival times when the women and the men are both drunk. We also noticed that there was a lot of malnutrition in the village. There was inflated tummies, eye problems. A lot of the women look much older than they really are and this was really because of malnutrition and a lack of uh, fresh water. The Bonda culture is quite unique in itself compared to other cultures within India and within other tribes. The women usually marry boys that are much younger than them. Sometimes the age gap between the man and wife can be more than 15 years. And they do this apparently so that when the boy is younger, the woman would take care of him, uh, train him. And when the woman gets older, the husband will then take care of her. This was an experience of a lifetime. In the cities, we are spoiled for choice. We have everything on our fingertips. But does that really make us free? In this village, they hardly have water and food. But everything they do, they grow on their own with the work of their hands. They grow their own food, cut their own firewood, and have to walk miles for clean water. 
still they do it with smiles on their faces and an attitude to welcome anybody that might be a guest to their village a lot of the bondos still use bow and arrow to hunt in the forests this is a tribe of people that is stuck in the past but still has one leg in the future in a way i felt like they were showing me what freedom truly is